What's going on guys, John Elder here from Konami.com and in this video, we're going to look at using classes with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to look at classes for Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so up until now with Kinter, we've been just, you know, putting things on the screen and making little apps. But as you get more sophisticated with building out your graphical user interfaces, your software, you're going to have to sort of keep track of things better. And a great way to do that is by using classes. Now, classes with Python are a sort of more advanced topic. They're not super difficult. They're just more advanced. Uh, they're not really beginner stuff. And I've been sort of trying to tailor these Kinter videos to more beginner levels. So this is definitely the next step up. So uh, in this video, we're just going to start to look at classes. We're not going to dive into them really deep. We're just going to, you know, sort of set the framework and then we'll build on that from there. But classes with Kinter are actually very easy. You just define your class, create your initialization function, method, whatever you want to call it, and you know change a couple little things from what we've been sort of used to doing up until now. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So before we get started, very, very quickly, I have very fancy t-shirts for sale. If you like the Code of Me t-shirt and would like to buy one for yourself, I've got a link in the comments below. It's just teespring.com forward slash Code Me dash com question mark PID equals looks like 369 or you could just let's just try this yeah just go to code me slash com dot dash com and you've got this uh, basic t-shirt here we've got hoodies so if you're interested in looking very very stylish uh, go grab a code me.com t-shirt I make a couple of bucks when every time you buy them and then not very much but uh, they're fun to have so anyway so I've created a new file in our GUI directory that we've been using up until now. And it's just the same Kinter basic code we've been doing always. You know, we define our root window, we got our title, little icon, and we set our sizes 400 by 400. Down here we have our main loop. So up until now, all this is the same. So to use classes with Kinter, we just start by defining a class. So we can call class and name it anything you want. I'm just gonna name it Elder because we're not creating anything specific right now. We're just learning about how to use them. So name them anything you want at this point. Uh, in the future, you're gonna name them more descriptively. If you're gonna build a calculator app, you would name it class calculator maybe, or calculator layout or whatever, uh, be, des be descriptive. So we start out by defining uh, an initialate, an init function. And this is just underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. And this is really how you start any sort of class in Python. And then inside of here, we have to pass self, as you always do with classes. And then we also have to pass something else. We have to pass this main root window. So you could call it root, I guess, uh, but that's kind of confusing to have two roots going around. So you might call it main or master or you know something like that. So, all right, so inside of here, I'm gonna use a frame. We haven't really talked about frames, but frames are just what they sound like. They're you know boxes that hold things. Uh, they're usually invisible. You can make them visible by giving them borders, but uh, there's just a way to keep track of certain elements and kind of group them all together. So I'll just create a frame here. So my frame, and we're going to set this equal to it's a frame. And instead of normally we would have passed root because this is our root window, but now we're passing master because this is right here. Master is root because we're passing root into here, as you'll see in just a minute when we uh, initialize this thing. So, okay, my frame, frame master, and let's just pack this on the screen for now. And uh, let's say inside of here, we wanna, I don't know, just create a button. So now to create a button in the past, we would have just named it my button equals, you know, and then we would have put it in root. The text would have been something like, you know, click me. And then if we wanted a command, you know, we would have put it right there. Now that's how we used to do it. Now, instead of passing the name my button, we have to call self dot my button because we're passing self into this initialization function. And if you don't know an init function, this is just the function that gets called every time your class runs. It gets called automatically. So uh, it's just the normal thing you do with classes whenever you create any class, they all have an init uh, function right off the bat. 
And it's just the first thing that gets done automatically when your class runs, right? So, so we're passing self my button and instead of root, we want master because from now on inside of our class, anytime we want to refer to root, we refer to it as master because that's what we named it right here. If you had to name this main, we would have put main here. If you named it root, we would put root here. But whatever you named it right here, that's what this, that's what goes here. So finally, we want to put this on the screen. So let's go self dot uh, my button dot pack. I'll just pack this for now. And uh, let's give this a pad Y of 20 or something just to push it down a little bit. Okay, so that's really all there is to it. Now we've got this clicker function, so we should create that really quickly. So just below here, we're just going to go define clicker. And then we also want to pass self. We always want to pass self into these things. And then just do whatever you want to do. I don't want to get into this. So let's just print onto the screen. Uh, look at you, dot, 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 you clicked a button, <laughs> right? And this will just print that to the terminal. So, all right, we're almost done now. This is correct, but we now have to call this class if we actually want to run it. And to do that, we just, outside of the class anywhere, ahead uh, of the root dot main loop thing here, we just call it. So uh, we can call this anything we want. Let's just call it E for elder. And then we just call the class elder. Now we want to pass in root, right? We're passing in our root window right here. That's how this gets passed in. So the root gets passed into the class when we run it here. Master becomes root and then it just flows from there. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and head back over to our GUI and let's run this. And we have an error. What did we do wrong? Button, button, ah, this is a button. All right, that looks good. And also here, I noticed I've done something wrong here. We're calling this clicker function. We need to pass self dot clicker. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. Give this another try. It's Monday morning. You could tell. All right, so click me. We click it. Nothing seems to have happened. But when we close this down here on the terminal, it says, look at you. You clicked a button and it has worked. So let's try this again without the self just to see what happens. If we save this, come back over here, run it again, we get an error, clicker is not defined. So anytime you're calling functions inside of your class, you've always got to call it a self that click. And that's the same here, right? So we've got self my button, self my button, We're passing self here. Anytime you're going to do stuff inside of your classes, from now on, it's all going to be self. That's sort of one of the main differences with doing classes versus doing, you know, as we've been doing up until now without using classes. And then right down here, obviously, we're just initializing our class. And this is how you initialize any kind of class in Python, right? You just give it a name. And you've now created a, an object, a class, an E object, right? And we can do object -y things to it if we wanted to. Uh, there's nothing really to do to it in this instance, except for run it, which is what we've done here. Uh, so that's fun. So this, these are classes, just very simple, and it's a, it's kind of a nice way to, you know, structure your app using classes. If you're used to using classes, Kinter is pretty simple, and uh, that's cool. So in the next couple of videos, we'll probably get into this in more detail because there's more stuff to learn with this. Uh, right here, we're just, you know, running this function and printing this to the screen, which is not that interesting. We're obviously going to want to do more intricate things, and so we'll start to look at how to do those type of things in coming videos. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, buy a very cool codemy.com t-shirt, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 85,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.